Johnson talking with Troy Woodland, the man behind the Super Stole with the team, of course. But now you're working on something completely different, except that it's not completely different. You're using some of the technology you already know. What is this, Troy? Well, th this is... Uh, a lot of people think I'm going backwards going this way, but sometimes you got to take a couple steps back you know, to move forward. Well, and it's an interesting thing. It, the Superstole does what it does, but this is going to deliver a different product. You're looking at an ultralight here. That's that's right. The, and, and uh, you know, my roots years ago, I used to fly ultralight. Sure. And in the back of my mind, I've always, uh, I miss it. When I know. first met you, that was the kind of aircraft you were flying. That's right. And now I'm flying a 180 horsepower Titan and <laughs> I got 500 hours on it last year, and is that right? And uh, I started adding up the fuel bill and everything else, and it was like, wow, what are we doing? You know, and a lot of it was just out goofing off, having fun, which and is what you're supposed to do with these airplanes. That's right. But it costs some money. It does. So this is going to be more economical to have that same amount of fun, or or not the same fun, but a kind of fun like that. Yeah. Well, in a lot of cases, it's actually a lot more fun. You can build them ready to fly. Is that going to be a long-term goal for you? We will. We'll build them ready to fly. Um, I, I prefer the kitting. Um, yeah, well, you guys got kitting down, so yeah. I'm sure you can do that competently. But if I said, I don't want a kit, can I just buy one? Absolutely. Cool. And uh, and we probably can produce one pretty fast because there's not a lot to it. <laughs> and I'm trying to keep it that way. Well, I was looking at it here, and you said, well, you know, if you look at this this fuselage that I'm seeing here, while it doesn't look like a super stole to me, it's got super stole heritage. Is that right? Yeah, Super Stole, Highlander. Basically, all I did was I just took a uh, Super Stole or a Highlander airframe, and I just narrowed it 12 inches. And I, there was a lot of talk whether we went go with a chromoly uh, tail section or a boom tube. Ah, okay. And because this is clearly a boom tube back it here. Is. So, and why did you do that? I did it because I wanted it to look like an ultralight. And that was it. And it is a little bit easier to manufacture. It's less, it's and it's less expensive. Um, and but mainly, I just wanted it to look like an ultralight, like a traditional ultralight, like we've seen for the last 40 years. And I've been wanting to build one for years. Okay. When we engineered it, we engineered the the wing square footage, the everything around part 103. I mean everything. And when I seen this engine um, a couple years ago, year ago. Um, I looked at that and I said, you know what, that's my opportunity. Why did you look at that and think that could work for what I've got in mind? Well, because of the 62 pounds that it weighs <laughs> and, uh, and, and what, they, what they predict on thrust, you know, it would it, make a, a nice little performing airplane. You know, we've weighed it and, it, and, and we have made weight with about 15, 20 pounds to spare. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. You're gonna have a, you got wings done, you just didn't bring them with you? We have wings done. We were just finishing up the spoilers for roll control in them, and we weren't quite done, so I didn't want to fabric them and then have to go back and finish things, so I yeah. just left them at home. I okay. just kind of wanted to see what, 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 how it would be accepted. Uh, but in the last five years or so, I've heard a lot of people talking about it, and some others, the Aerolite 103, for example, he's building all he can make. Yeah. So I think your timing is pretty good. But, but what, but is, what kind meantime, of power does this put out? Um, they claim 37 horsepower. Really? Out of this little tiny guy, uh, huh? Out of it, yeah, which kind of surprises me. Um, and how big a prop have you got on here? It's a, I believe it's a 62. 62. And that's going to make this airplane perform how? What's your expectation? No. The, the prop manufacturer predicted around a little over 200 pounds of thrust. Okay. Um, if, that, if that becomes real, then it, it'll be fantastic. Um, I, I do know that years ago, working with the Free Air 447s, um, you know, getting 200 pounds of thrust out of one of those was tough. Yeah. Uh, they, we, would be, we, we could do it, but it was tough. And so I'm, I'm spectacle of that, but I'm, ho I'm hoping that we'll see. That. Well, if I, you know, it's not like a new thing. Well, there's a lot. They've more, been around I mean, with these for quite a while. We, we got to remember that it's been, you know, almost two decades since I've been playing with this stuff, and a lot has changed in prop technology Absolutely. and, uh, um, you know, just everything. And the, and and there, there again, that's another reason why we're, you know, 
it's a lot easier to build a Part 103 airplane today than it was years ago, just Absolutely. because of the materials we have. And because of things like solid works and whatnot mm -hmm. that didn't exist back then, yeah. you had to put parts together and sort and of figure it out as you go. Yeah, that's right. And now and, you can and design now ahead the whole thing's modeled, and the weight is is all is right there on the computer, and so. You know. So let's talk about that control system that you mentioned. Uh, you're talking spoilers, or what might be called spoilerons, because they don't go up together, they go up one at a time, for roll control, is that correct? That's correct. And now I've flown aircraft that had that, and I actually found it a very interesting control system, because when you, when you take a stick and you push it left in a spoileron aircraft, you don't have any adverse yaw at all. That's right. In fact, you have I had to learn a new term, proverse yaw. It goes the way you want it to go right away. Yeah. And they're very effective if you put them at the right place, and you know about that from Superstall. That's right. Fill in some detail for me. Well, when the Superstall, we, we, we built a wing that uh, in a lot of ways almost flew too slow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on, in calm con conditions, it, it was fantastic. And, and when you get an airplane at a high angle of attack like that, you're basically controlling it with the rudder. Well, in in uh, right. turbulent conditions, you can find yourself uh, in uh, behind the power curve. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I didn't. There was times where I, I found myself in that position a lot more than I, I cared for. And so, because um, the airplane's capable of going so slow. That's right. Yeah. And uh, you know, we the helio is just right right here. You know, I I, I look at one every day, and. Uh, um, they have what they call interceptors, and, and I, I say spoilers, interceptors, you know, most people know them as a spoiler, but they are actually an interceptor. Okay. And so we, we did the, all the R&D on the interceptors on the Superstall, and it just became, uh, it was a deal breaker, man. It, it was, everything changed for me. I could take that mine in and out of places um, in conditions that I wouldn't have ever even dreamed of because right? of the roll control at slow speeds. Because and, of the interceptor slash spoiler. Yeah. However you want to call it. And Most people know them as spoiler, so let's stick with that term for now. That's but, right. Okay, and, so you're going to have that on this, but you haven't flown it yet, so you're I, allowing that I, maybe you won't do that because of the feel to the pilot? Yeah, with, with just interceptors, um, you don't you don't get that pilot feel like you do with ailerons. So they're basically just a neutral stick. I mean, it's just a... Um, there's just no feel to them. Right. And so we have some things that we're going to do with some spring tensioning on the stick, a centering system, okay? Just to give feel just to, to the give pilot. Feel to the pilot. Not because you need that really. That's right. But because it's it's it feels sort of loose or something even though it's not loose That's obviously. Right. It's doing what it's supposed to do, but it doesn't have to fight the air to get up there and do what mm -hmm. it does. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. Exactly. And that's why when you have like, you know, freeze ailerons and so on and so forth, that's what that's it's that's what it's doing is kind of changing the feel of the pilot and that's it you know the, the effectiveness of the effectiveness of it is the same it just gives it power steering you know? okay so, uh, I'm looking back here now it, it's got if I just look at just this little part of it here it kind of reminds me of an old team product called the air bike which I consider the airplane you get on not in and this is kind of that way too you're sort of out in the out in the atmosphere here yeah well the the team air bike is a neat airplane, and everybody likes it. Everybody knows about it. Everybody likes it. You know, um, I liked it. Uh, Reed's Javelin was. Uh, I, I've always liked that airplane. Um, gentleman that taught me how to fly, he actually owned one, and is I used, that right? to, used to watch him fly that. So, you know, this is 20 years ago. You know, these things have always, you know, kind of been in the back of my mind. And I always said if I was to build one, because I was involved with Flying K, it would be more of that design because we don't have all the cowlings, we right. don't have a big broad windshield, we don't have um, you know, all those components that we have to manufacture, you know. Um, and add and weight. Add weight and right. et cetera. And time to build and all those things. Uh, yeah. So I see you've got tabs on it here. You're I gonna, do. You're, you're gonna have a, a cowling, or I mean not a cowling, but a windscreen here? You can, you can run it without. But I'm I'm going to have on my personal one. All I'm having is just a little boot cowling, just to tie in the the, the, the windscreen, and that's it. So a lot of great information about it. Clearly, still a work in process, but not much ahead. That's all good stuff. I, for one, will be very interested to see this when you get it finished, and I'm sure many of our viewers are as well. Where can we find you on the web, Troy, so that people can keep track of how this is going as a project? Just go to our website. All right, very good. So. 
This is one I'll be watching carefully, but I've always been watching what goes on with Just Aircraft because it's a lot of fun and cool stuff that people love. You can find that and much more affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com.